Hello, um, welcome to a first ever for my channel. I'm going to do a tournament review. This is also a first ever on my channel because I've never uh, actually battle reported a tournament. Not that I've never been to a tournament, but anyway. So, uh, what we're covering here is the Warhammer Refugee Tournament. It took place January 9th, 2016. Uh, the tournament was held by the Outlanders um, Gaming Group or Guild um, from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, this is just a flyer. I was trying to find like an image or, or some sort of a, a more appropriate thing for titling this, but I was like, well, okay. Here's a uh, <laughs> here's a here's a flyer. I thought that I saw that they were putting up. So uh, this covers some of the the main points of it, though. It was a 1500 point three round tournament, uh, and yet again, it was on January 9th, 2016, in Brookstone Village, Omaha, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, specifically. Um, it was, I think there was something like 12 or 14 people showed up, um, or, well, signed up and came. So, it was not a big tournament, but it was, I, th I think it was 28 people max, and they didn't quite get there. But, um, it was, it was a fairly well organized, uh, and hosted event, and we'll get into some more of those, uh, thoughts and things about it later, um. I'm going to go over this section of the video. I'll just go over my list. Um, I'll show some pictures. And I'll just give a general idea of what I was thinking. Um, people have asked for me to put out videos uh, where I, where I, instead of just reporting on what, I, what happened, to try to uh, give some uh, thought to why I did it. So, uh, if you don't find that interesting, I probably would stop watching this video. But, otherwise, you can hear me uh, rattle on, prattle on about this. So, uh, I took dwarves. I took dwarves to the tournament um, specifically because it would, for me to bring a painted army, I would either need to bring my beastmen or dwarves um, to make up for 1500 points. Um, we don't, the only thing I would otherwise come close is I'm working on kingdoms of men, um, but I don't quite have enough points um, painted to bring. Um, I didn't have to, you didn't have to bring a painted army to this tournament, and some people didn't. Um, but, if you don't have enough of anything else to make a full army, I could prob maybe have made a Kingdoms of Men with Dwarf Allies. Might have been able to come up 1500 points, but that would have been pushing it, and probably wouldn't have met the synergy I wanted. So, anyway, I brought Dwarves. So, I'll just go over my review here quick, uh, my army list, so it's again it. As my other videos show, it was a bull worker regiment. Um, I put the brew of strength on them. Um, my thought was bull workers by themselves are essentially just, they're just ironclad. They have phalanx and a couple more attacks. They come in the same same general layout as the ironclad do. Their defense, five. Um, they don't have any crushing strength. They don't have any special rules. They just get phalanx. Well, I guess they have headstrong because they're dwarves, but... They get phalanx. So, I, I made some, and I like them. Uh, I like the idea of using them as kind of an anvil, um, but in my, in my previous games using them, the bull workers um, and, just, and just vanilla dwarves in general don't do enough for me. Uh, they, they just don't do it. So, they, they, have, they hit on fours. They have no crushing strength. There's, there's, they don't get like an exorbitant amount of attacks. They don't, they don't have anything that sets them apart. They don't, as I would phrase it, do work uh, in, the, in the strictest sense. So they can be okay anvils. They can. Um, you can get defense six dwarves. I mean, it's, that's good. You know, the, uh, the iron guard, they're, they're good. Um, they're expensive, and and that's another thing about these bull workers is they're expensive. So anyway, I gave them the roof strength, um, hoping that a little bit of crushing strength, fifteen attacks. Hey, if, as long as I get a round of attacks off, I should get some damage. I should get something out of them. That was my thought. Um, I took a troop of ironclad. Um, I was expecting maybe someone would bring an exorbitant amount of shooting, and so I wanted at least a screen um, for my shield breakers. Um, and also I thought, well, I could just use them for doing some charge blocking, some redirecting, uh, something like that. Like a, a troop of ironclad isn't bad. It's like 75 points, you know, defense five. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, for, for a troop, I, I like a troop of ironclad. They're not going to do anything. I mean, for the, for the general point, unless, 
you know, someone does something really silly. Um, so, I mean, I like them. So, I also brought two troops of rangers. Um, rangers are a excellent multi-purpose dwarf unit. It is multi-purpose in the sense that it is both a uh, ranged attack and combat capable unit. So they have ranged attack four plus, and they have melee four plus. What sets the uh, what sets the rangers apart and why I like them is well, both vanguard, it's great. They have movement five, which is also great. They have crushing strength one, so they are actually a little better in combat, technically because they don't have piercing. Now they have crossbows, and it lists them as light crossbows, which it also lists as treat as bows. So essentially, they have bows, so they can move and shoot. They can vanguard, and they have pathfinder. So they're 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 pretty good. Um, they're a little expensive, 135 points for a troop, but the uh, versatility I get out of, I can get out of them is just great. Um, generally, you can't your opponent can't ignore them for the most part. He's gonna have to do something about them, but to do something about them is probably gonna take more points than what they're worth. So it's. Yeah, it's a great little it's a great little utility to have. Um, so, I also brought a horde of shield breakers. Um, I like the shield breakers a lot. Crushing strength two. A horde is twenty five attacks, which is just phenomenal. And I also generally throw brew of sharpness on them. So brew of sharpness is a very expensive magic item. It is forty five points. It is about a, well, it is as high. I think as a magic item cost goes, but it turns them from hitting on fours to hitting on threes. So now you're now you're hitting two-thirds of your hits instead of one-half of your hits. And with Crushing Strength 2, you're going to knock about anything down. Um, where these guys are great, you know, like you get them into a dragon, you get them into a high defense, anything, and they're and they're going to smack it up. Um, what they're not terribly great as is, is large units of uh, very high nerve, very low defense things. So think of... Um, hordes of zombies, hordes of berserkers, things like that where their crushing strength is redundant and they just don't have enough attacks to knock one of those things out because they are themselves only defense four and they're not that great at grinding. So that's what their port is. They are, they are essentially like my hammer hammer in this army. Uh, so I, I bring a horde of earth elementals. I love earth elementals. Um, I put Blessing of the Gods on them just to give them a little more oomph. Um, uh, elementals are just great. These, these guys, they're Defense 6, Crushing Strength 1, 17 Nerve, Fearless. So it's pretty good. And Shambling. Um, I, I honestly am a full full believer that Shambling is a benefit and not a uh, detriment in the in the end. It, I think it outweighs the other. Um, so they're, they're great. They can take a charge and they can really dish it out. Um, I think honestly they're yeah they're just a great multi-purpose unit um you can get them into flanks you can surge them around uh they move five so yeah I like them a lot uh I brought an army standard bearer uh I wanted um a source of inspiring obviously it's good I gave him the boon stick um just so he has something else to do and give me a little more potential for the reach out and touch something um sort of event um Generally, I mean, it's either like a healing charm or, or a war of Kaaba or something. But I, I give him the boomstick, lightning three. It's gonna it's gonna do a point of damage on something just about every turn, and that's that's generally all I want. Um, I brought a ranger captain uh, with the wings of honey maze. So um, this is kind of a choice I got. I saw it, or read about other people online doing this. Um, this gives it you a character with a twenty inch vanguard. And a 20-inch, 360-degree charge. So, as I said with my ironclad troop, I was worried about running into exorbitant amounts of shooting, or shooting armies. So, uh, one of those thoughts for me was, okay, well, if he has a, if there is a horde of shooting I come into, and I get first turn, they're charged first turn. He has three attacks, he hits on threes, crushing strength one, he's going to do a point of damage, they're not going to shoot. That was my general thought with him. Um, the funny thing is in this tournament, I ran into no shooting hordes. So, um, he ended up doing other things, uh, but he's a great utility character. He's super fast. Well, of course he's flying, um, three attacks, crushing strength one. He has three shots if he wants. Um, he's pathfinder. He vanguards. He, uh, inspires the Rangers. Um, sometimes, yeah, that's helpful too. So 
That's why I take him. Uh, I brought a stone priest. Obviously, I'm bringing elementals. I need my surge. Uh, the stone priest, I give him the bane chant upgrade. This is because the earth elementals have crushing strength one, and sometimes it's good to have crushing strength more than one. Um, I like him a lot. He's defense five. He's an 11 13. He's 120 points, but he generally doesn't give it up. Like, I might sack him if things get really bad, but it, it's it's a bit more work for for my opponents to take out a stone priest. He's not he's not squishy, so I like him. Uh, and the greater earth elemental, love it. Um, it's a hundred sixty point monster or something. I might list list over here. Someone to be ruffling around some papers. Uh, yeah, he's a hundred sixty point monster. Eighteen fearless defense six. He is an amazing handful. Um, he's okay at fighting. You know, don't get me wrong. He's good at fighting too. He has eight attacks, which is low, but he does have crushing strength three. So combined with shambling and pathfinder, he's going to do some work himself. He can take a charge and he can dish a little bit back. So he's, he's just first points. He's amazing. Um, I, I honestly, I have another model and I'll probably put another one together if I really keep playing dwarfs a lot. So that's, that's the general gist of the things I brought and what I like about them. Specifically, like, and individually. Um, so here's a shot of the army I brought. <clears throat> oh, it's a little hard to see some of these things because I was trying to get everybody in my light box. Um, but you see I have you know, my rangers and all of my other troops. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll just start with this. So originally my thought of this army is I would have three um, semi-autonomously functioning groups. So... What I mean by that is three groups of characters combined with, you know, troops who can who can function to do things separately um, or just within, you know, as combined with another unit or separately within, within just by themselves. Um, Kings of War has a lot of multiple objectives, um, a lot of varying um, uh, scenarios that require you to go get things, to go do things, uh, to hold positions. It's not always just about fighting in the middle and seeing who kills the most people, although that is sometimes the part of it. So uh, with carrying on with that thought of autonomous groups, um, I have these. I have them split off into uh, groups here. So my first uh, group was the the rangers and the ranger captain. So um, ring, well, I mean this is this is pretty straightforward. Rangers are fast. Uh, rangers can shoot. Rangers can clear off chaff. They can be chaff. Um, they get into flanks, they're great, and a ranger, flying ranger captain can inspire them. And really, <laughs> the only way the ranger captain dies is, is if I essentially let him die. You, you'd have to really chase him, and he's he's <laughs> he's better than most most people at flying around because he also has Pathfinder. Um, so he, this is a great, this is a good little unit. It's fast. It can move off to the sides. It's not going to take a lot of damage, but it is certainly has a lot of potential. Uh, my second group is the rest of the dwarves, essentially. So. Um, the bull workers, combined with the shield breakers, to act as a somewhat of a, a hammer anvil scenario where the shield breakers are the ha hammer, and the ironclad troop. So this combined this with the, uh, the the army standard bearer with the boomstick is a bit of like a uh, inspired, somewhat autonomous, functioning group. Um, these guys can dish out a lot of damage. Um, they can't grind as well, but you know they're they're no slouches. They can spread out. They can group up. Um, sit around as need be. Um, they're not very fast. They're movement four, but they can march and they'll get work done. That's the idea. Anyway, uh, and they worked out pretty well. Um, nothing, nothing against against what they did. Um, and my last group, and probably my favorite group, is the animate constructs, inanimate constructs, and the uh, stone priest. Um, I, these, these guys obviously make sense together. The Stone Priest inspires them. He surges them. He bane chants them. Um, and since he's too neat, tiny, he can just hide behind them. Um, normally he spends most of the game, uh, with his face in the Greater Earth Elemental's butt. Because, well, Greater Earth Elemental is height four. You can't see my Stone Priest. Um, so obvious, these, these guys do a lot of work. Um, defense six, just, just fantastic. Just a fantastic... A group of, of troops. These guys end up end up doing most of my work a lot of the time. As far as when it comes time to kill, these guys do these guys do a good job. So, um, 
A little retrospective, though, on my list. If I gave an MPP in this tournament, it would probably be to the Rangers, um, just because some of the functions the Rangers were able to provide for me um, and really seal some deals on some of these games. Um, I would probably have to give a nearly equivalent nod to the, Earth, to the Elementals. Um, the Elementals do what they always do, and they make me somewhat think about just playing... Well, I wouldn't... I wouldn't want to play um, Forces of Nature necessarily because I think the Stone Priest is an important component to why the Elementals are good um, f with the Dwarves. The, the Stone Priest is a very tough, um, <laughs> a, a very tough but reasonably priced Druid com equivalent. Um, he comes with Surge 8, he can take Bane Chant, and he's defense 5, 11, 13. So I like him. I like him a lot. Um, someday maybe I'll run two hordes of element. It'll be just like all elementals and stone priests. But anyway, so good nod to them. Um, the worst, the worst uh, component of my army, I think I would have to give to the bulwarkers for this tournament. Um, I think it was a bit of just a bold miscalculation on what I was going to be able to do with them, as opposed to like you say, I think it was a bad part of list building and a bit of bad luck in the game. So. The bull workers never once got to attack anything. Now, I'm a dwarf. I'm playing dwarves. I understand. I'm going to get charged first for the most part. That's okay. Um, but the bull workers never survived any of their charges. Um, and and I and I think it might just be the the overestimation overestimation on the importance of what we did with or what I did with them. So. As this is the next thing that one of the major changes I would put in this right away would be I'd take the bull workers. Uh, switch him to an ironclad troop or an ironclad regiment and give him the phalanx item the orcs, bane, amulet, whatever that thing is that's way cheaper um, so they don't have the brew of strength obviously anymore They'll, they will be purely there to be a anvil maybe just or just you could say a little bit of a bigger road bump than the troop of ironclad um, and then using those extra points because that, that saves quite a bit of points I could get some throwing mastiffs in um, I, I kind of miss not having them. Uh, they would have been pretty helpful um, against my last game because I could have thrown them at those vampires. And that would have been pretty nice. Um, just a, a bit more, I might have been able to actually take out one of those troops of, of Reavers. But, so that's, that's my thoughts, the big things of what I would do with this list. Um, the, the results of the tournament, um, I had two wins and one loss. So it was pretty good. Um, I ended up on table one, which was fun. Uh, so I got I got to play there, uh, but I did end up dropping out of the top three because of my loss. Uh, my thoughts on the tournament uh, and just in general, um, Kings of War is a is an amazingly fast game, like fast, fast. So this tournament was scheduled to go from um, essentially you know nine nine o'clock check in, starting the games around ten. And then going essentially till 5.30 and then doing uh, awards till 6. Well, well, guess what? We were done by 3. Uh, fortunately, everyone had just more or less stayed in the area. And we figured out that, hey, guess what? We don't need two hours and a half an hour break for a game. We can do a game in an hour and a half or less for everybody. We can get these games through. Uh, and, we, and we don't need that much time for setup. I mean, it's just... If you've ever played a game of, of Warhammer Fantasy, and this is, these are also smaller Kings of War games, because we are only talking about 1,500 points. So there's just less stuff on the board. There's so much less stuff to do than Warhammer Fantasy Battle, um, which comes to my next point. Like Kings of War is just not nearly as, as uh, mentally draining as Warhammer Fantasy was. Um, I, played, I played a tournament where I played three games of Warhammer Fantasy in a day, and I am wiped like I am, I am wiped out. I am tired. Um, looking up rules, um, deciding on all these things. Uh, it's just very time-consuming and very taxing to keep all of these things in check. Uh, Kings of War is just clean. It's clean. It's quick. Um, very few questions. I mean, a couple people had rules a little off, so I mean we corrected them. But for the most part, you know, there, there's not a lot of complaints. Everyone's having a good time. Um, so. Uh, there's, in this next tag, um, and I've mentioned this before, terrain terrain is a very important component of Kings of War. Uh, mostly because certain aspects of the game get a little overpowered 
uh, if the terrain isn't there to wrangle it in. So uh, um, excessive shooting armies are, are very, very uh, hard to deal with if there's not an appropriate amount of terrain on the board to do, you know, uh, mitigate that factor. Um, so I, th I think they realize that and they, they understand that at this event, it was just a little, it was light on the terrain. It was mostly just hills. Um, for, for the most part, it's mostly just hills and every, every board had maybe a piece or two of impassable. So um, just throwing out a bunch more fences or hedges or just general stuff really would have cleaned that up. So I think, I think they, under they understood that and, and it's not, you know, a problem necessarily. At least it wasn't for me because I never faced an army that was inherently like released of their, or um, you know, just their potential was just enormous because because there wasn't anything on the board. Um, I don't think that really came up. The in fact, the, the board I played, I played on one board where there was a river through the middle of it, which was good. It, it really helped break things up. But it ended up being better for me because nearly, well, at least probably half my units have Pathfinder. And none of my opponents did. So it ended up being, a, you know, a big benefit to me, honestly, on that board. Um, when, but, it, you know, that one was fine, but a lot of the others didn't have much stuff. So uh, the last the last thing to look at, I think, is um, the, the people with essentially the most <laughs> flying and surge were also the people on the top tables. Um, using using flying... Flying is really, really powerful in this game. No, no question. Um, there's certain things you can do to mitigate flying, but there's just some things that it's hard. It's hard to cover all your bases. Uh, surge, surge is an, it is an equally powerful thing. Um, it, it's especially detrimental against newer players. Um, they're not as they're not as familiar or expecting these sorts of things, and it really seemed for me, at least, to set apart who had played. 30 plus games and who had played five games um yeah my yeah my my end opponent i know i can't i can I, i'm not didn't see what he did for his other games but i'm sure he took full advantage of his uh flying surging and the whole thing so um, otherwise it was a it was a great tournament i had tons of fun um i would go again uh certainly uh would go again um and yeah um i guess Thanks, thanks for listening to me rattle on. Um, I may or may not do these again in the future, but um, I just thought, hey, I just had this tournament yesterday. I got all day to make videos, so let's just get it all out there. Um, and this isn't an attempt to critique or, or tell someone how they should play dwarves. This is essentially just a, an idea on how I played dwarves and what I did with these things. So um, take take what you want or not from it. Um, I'm not attempting to tell anyone how they should or shouldn't do anything. So. Thanks for watching and goodbye.